Hey, what's up, everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna be showing you how to add a sort of a 90s slash 80s filter on to your footage. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating basically this right here. So this is the original footage right like so. And then this is sort of the 80s filter on it. Now you notice this isn't like an over the top sort of filter. It's just trying to recreate the environment that the 80s and early 90s sort of use, which was slightly blurry um, cameras, uh, especially because the TVs of what they were working with. And then some grain, a little bit less compressed or more compressed uh, colors and saturation and stuff, and just sort of recreate that feel to it. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Let's get started. So first thing we should do is create a sequence and then go ahead and drag in our footage like so. So in this situation, I'm just using this video I got off of videos.pexels.com. Um, it's one I've used quite frequently just right here, just a great place to sort of grab quick footage that you wanna throw into it, all of it's copyright free, fun time to use this stuff. So I went ahead and dropped this footage in right like so. And then now what I'm gonna do is begin the sort of creation of that, that look. First thing I wanna do is go into creative and we're just gonna grab this faded film look and bring that up a little bit. This is sort of the effect that we're almost creating right here is we're trying to make it look a little bit faded, a little bit sort of uh, degraded over time. In the temperature, what we wanna do is, I like to bring it into a little bit warm side of things. For some reason, I feel like a lot of the, the 80s and early 90s movies had that sort of warm feeling to it. So just bringing it slightly over to that to have a little bit of a warm tint makes it look a little bit more sort of in theme. Contrast, bring that down because what we're trying to do here is we're trying to crush that um, contrast. We're trying to crush the the basically the range of colors here, because again, the cameras were a little bit less advanced. They were using real film, can't capture as much as you can with digital. And then I like to go into the curves, and then throughout the red, green, and blue, I just grab these and sort of just go in a little bit random directions on each side. And what this is gonna do is it's going to sort of crush down each side just a little bit. And the reason that this sort of adds a little bit of the, the vibe to it is because it makes it so that there's less colors available overall. And this generates a little bit more of that feeling as well. And so overall, you can see that with this change, what we created right here is just, it sort of almost brought it down a little bit into the reds. If you don't want you know that much, you can actually sort of change these around to, to get the color to fit right. But overall, what we're trying to do is create that more condensed Luma value here. Back in creative, I like to also sort of bring up the vibrance a touch and then bring down the saturation. And the reason I do this is because the, the vibrance, it's going to make the colors that were there pop and then everything else sort of fall off a little bit. And the reason for this is again, back then the cameras were a little bit worse. And so if something was very vibrant, it stood out, it, the camera was easily able to capture it, but those in-between colors, the, the variances of colors, was a little bit harder to capture. So we kinda wanna smash those together and then just really bring out what used to pop, make it still pop. So that's sort of our first uh, step here, is we've taken it and we've sort of added this little filter to it to make it look just a little bit more degraded and what I feel like looks like that, that dimension. You can, of course, manipulate these arounds to make it what you have in your head. Next effect is I'm going to go ahead and add in a little bit of grain. So we're gonna search for noise. We're gonna go down into the noise HLS auto right here. It's under noise and grain. HLS auto is the one we wanna do. Go ahead and drag and drop that onto the clip. If you're gonna apply these to a bunch of different clips, you might wanna create an adjustment layer first so that you can just sort of stretch it out over the whole thing. Uh, but since I only have one clip, I'm just gonna work within the clip here. So within noise HLS, we're going to go ahead and we want to affect the lightness. We don't want to affect the hue. That's going to add grain only to like the, the different hue parts. Uh, and it's actually going to sort of take the saturation away. And then saturation is actually going to make it look a little bit uh, pretty bad in overall. That actually makes it, uh, it's kind of funny because if you bring it here, this actually sort of looks almost closer to 60s and 70s, right when they started getting the color in. So if that was an effect you wanted to go to, maybe you want to grab that and move it around a little bit. But what I wanna do is I wanna to go to lightness here and maybe bring it around 6%. And you'll notice that we get that immediate film grain. It actually almost looks immediately like Seinfeld in this situation, or maybe even like Friends or Back to like uh, Back to the Future or something like that. And then we wanna go into the noise animation speed and we just wanna bring that down to 12. Uh, the reason for that is this is going to animate the, the noise or the grain here moving around and we don't want it to move really quick. 
Finally, we don't want this to be noise. We don't want it to be digitally added noise. So we're going to go ahead and change it from noise uniform down to noise grain. And this is gonna make it look a little bit more natural like film grain used to look. To look at this, what we're gonna do is, this is sort of gonna get into a little bit of the intensive processor sort of things. So you'll notice that the bar is red, which means if we play this back, it is not going to look very good. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is gonna go ahead and click the enter key and let it render out, and then I will come back once it is done. And there we have it. We have the beginnings of our effect right here. We're actually almost done. And you'll notice that we it's looking pretty good right now. If we wanna go ahead and just have this go over and over again, I can go into here and drag out that loop button so I can click on that. And now we can just sort of have it play over and over again. And so we are getting pretty close to the final effect. Also to create this sort of box here so I can loop in it and it only renders out this section, just click I and then O, and that'll go ahead and create the in and out points for you. I'm gonna go ahead and redo my area right here. And then now let's go ahead and implement the final step. And that's actually going to be to add some of that pixelation to it. So if we click tab on this, you'll notice that it's still a little bit clear in some regards. This was actually filmed pretty blurry, but you'll notice that like the leaves, it's still pretty clear overall. And we wanna add just a little bit of pixelation to this. The best way to do that is to go into Video Stylize Mosaic, drop that on right here, and definitely don't wanna go with that. We're gonna go ahead and we wanna bring the scale of the entire clip up to 105. And that's just because it sort of brings in the edge a little bit, even when we go really, really high on these. So we wanna make sure that we don't have that blurred edge on the back there. We're then gonna go with horizontal blocks. We're gonna bring that all the way up. And then vertical blocks, we're going to go ahead and bring down. Actually, let's go the inverse here. Let's bring this down, bring the vertical blocks really, really high. And then if we bring the horizontal blocks down, you'll notice that we start getting this pixelation across here. And so we just wanna make one of these just a little bit pixelated. So this at about a thousand is perfectly clear and that's just because this is uh, 1080p by, this is 1920 by 1080. So if you get past 1080 and get past 1920, it's gonna look like the original footage. But if we drag this down a little bit, it's going to be basically representing just a little bit less pixels here. and because of that, it's gonna actually make it look pixelated. So instead of having our, what is it, our um, 1920 by 1080, instead of having 1080 here, we're gonna use only 617 blocks to make it up. And that's again going to grab it and make it just look a little bit more pixelated. And you can see it right here, like there's this sort of sharper transition up here is really noticeable. Instead of that clean line, we now have this little bit of blur on it. And again, it doesn't degrade the footage too much, but it gives us that feeling of the, the older time, like we're watching this on an old TV or like we've filmed it with a worse camera. And so overall, again, we're gonna have to click that enter key to render this out because these are both sort of processor intensive. Once it renders out, we'll come back. And there we go, now we have created both of these effects. We've added them on and we've actually generated something that looks pretty realistic. This isn't over the top like a lot of people do where they sort of take the RGB and they split it out and they make it, you know, the, the VCR lines come down. This is something that you would use to make it uh, sort of almost look realistic. Like if you're trying to shoot a movie today to make it look like it was shot in the 80s. It can give you that fun sort of feel to it. Also a great thing to use is if you have some uh, a character, something that's supposed to look back in time uh, at, you know, like an 80s clip and you don't actually have a clip, you can film it, add this effect to it, and it'll look like it was generated back in the 80s. Anyway, that is the effect. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and throw them in the comment section below on our website at adobemasters.net. If you want to see my videos similar to this one, go ahead and subscribe button and make a video every other day on Adobe-related products. And until next time, guys, see ya.